This is what gives rise to moral values. This is a process that takes thousands of years, it fits and starts, and should I say one more time, it's also what gives us our depth, what gives us our psychological um, uh, distinction from mere animals. Okay, so what Nietzsche tells us at this point is that um, Slave revolt in morality begins with resentment and becomes creative, gives birth to new values, namely moral values. Um, so while um, so section ten, um, while he says noble values. Whereas all noble morality, all noble values, grows out of a triumphant yes saying to oneself, from the outset, slave morality says no to an outside, to a different, to a not self. And this no is its creative deed. Um, this reversal of the value establishing glance, this necessary direction toward the outside, instead of back onto oneself, belongs to the very nature of resentment. In order to come into being, slave morality always needs an opposite and external world. It needs, psychologically speaking, external stimuli in order to be able to act at all. Its action is, from the ground up, reaction. And the reverse is the case with the noble manner of valuation. It acts and grows spontaneously. Uh, it seeks out its opposition only in order to say yes to itself, still more gratefully and more jubilant. Okay, so the contrast between the noble system of values and the moral system of values um, starts with this. The noble system doesn't depend on any kind of hostile external world. It starts simply by valuing and affirming its own strength. Um, it starts by simply affirming the qualities that it has of, as I say, strength and power, physicality, um, uh, celebrating uh, a powerful physicality of being in this world. Uh, and this affirmation is its primary uh, uh, form of evaluation. What it takes to be bad is simply the lack of things that it takes to be good. So what is bad is a lack of strength, a lack of physicality, unable to accomplish one's ends in the world. But this is, a, as it were, a secondary thought. So this contrast maybe enhances what's primary its strength, but is not itself most important. In contrast, the moral system defines itself by what it's opposed to, namely evil. So what's pride? So because resentment is at the heart of morality, the starting point of the moral system of values <coughs> is what it's opposed to, namely what's evil. Um, so, in other words, uh, in Danto's words, to exist, it needs an explanation for its suffering. It needs to find sin. It needs to find someone or something that's done wrong. Um, and, yeah. So here's a fundamental contrast between these two systems um, of value um, in the sort of order in which um, the order in which each of them proceeds. Um, there's a sense in which um, There's a sense in which they both start with the same 
same qualities, but have opposite assessments of them. So they both start with powerful, physical strength. This is what the noble system of values affirms as good. It's what the um, it's what the moral system of values identifies as evil. So defined in opposition to it. Um, and the secondary quality, uh, the weak, the self-denial, the asceticism, this is what the noble system of values takes to be bad and the moral system takes to be good. Okay, no questions about that? Yeah, right. Um, so, there's two ways to think about it. In one sense, the order of uh, evaluations between the noble and the moral systems <coughs> are opposite of one another. The noble system starts by what's good, by identifying what's good, affirming something, and then as a secondary thought, takes something to be bad if it's lacking those positive qualities. The noble, sorry, the moral system does exactly the opposite. It starts with what it resents. It starts with what it takes to be evil. It starts with what it takes to be the source of suffering. And then, as its secondary thought affirms what is not evil, namely passivity, um, uh, lack of vigor, self-denial. So they go in opposite directions. Uh, noble value is affirming something. The moral values are denying something what's primary to be reactive against something that's evil. But on the other hand, uh, they're both starting with sort of strength. They have exactly opposite assessments of this. Uh, and then they move on to weakness. And they have exactly opposite assessments of that too. Now Nietzsche admits um, that on 19, page 19, um, he admits that in some cases the noble system of values, uh, the noble system of values is liable to make mistakes because it is primarily concerned with what is being affirmed, namely strength and power. Um, there's a tendency for them to not pay very much attention to the weak, not pay very much attention to the ones that are bad. And the noble system of values, then, is liable to distort and misunderstand what it is that it's not affirmed, the ones that it's not so concerned with. Uh, further down on page 19, he says, um, when the noble manner of evaluation lays a hand on reality and sins against it, against reality, gets it wrong, this occurs relative to the sphere with which it is not sufficiently acquainted, namely the weak, the ordinary, the plebeian. Indeed, against the real knowledge which it rigidly defends itself. Right? It's positively concerned with not understanding what is weak and ordinary and democratic. In some cases, it forms a wrong idea of the sphere it holds in contempt, that of the common man, of the lower people. Um, on the other hand, he says, consider that the uh, on the other hand, consider that the affect of contempt, of 
looking down on them of the superior glance, will in any case fall, fall, sh fall far short of the falsification which the oppressed hate, the revenge of the powerless, lays a hand on its opponent, in effigy, of course. Um, so there's also a distortion, even a more powerful distortion, he thinks, among the proponents of the moral values <coughs> toward what they're hostile to, namely the powerful. And they take, well, revenge against them, against the sinners, against those who are evil, against those who are immoral. But of course, they're too weak actually to do anything, so it's an effigy in their minds. So they're going to hell. So the evil, powerful individuals are going to suffer in another life. OK, uh, one, right, so, um, so, this, so 20 spells out what I've been talking about. Um, I'll skip over this just for a moment. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, so, 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 so let me just talk about this just for a second. Um, over 21, um, everybody suffers. Everybody feels that the world doesn't cooperate <coughs> with them, that um, they um, suffer needlessly. Even the strong, even the powerful, even those who affirm um, noble ideals. And therefore, the human psychological tendency of resenting that applies to them too. 21. The resentment of the noble human being when it appears to him, so it, it is found in everybody, but it runs its course and exhausts itself in an immediate reaction. Therefore, it does not poison. On the other hand, it does not appear at all in countless cases where it's unavoidable in all the weak and powerless. To be unable for any time, length of time to take his enemies, his accidents, his misdeeds themselves seriously, that's the sign of strong, full natures in which there is an excess of formative, reconstructive, healing power that also makes one forget, that is, forget one's own suffering. So this doesn't mean that we mindlessly um, don't recognize our misdeeds or our suffering. It means that we're keenly aware of them, and what we do is um, try to make something of them. Don't blame some imaginary sin for uh, your suffering. Take that and try to make something creative out of it. Out of it. Um, such a human, he says, is simply able to shake off with a single shrug a collection of worms that in others would dig itself in. Here alone is also possible, assuming that it is at all possible on Earth, the true love of one's enemies, the true love of one's enemies, rather than continuing to fester and eat at oneself and come to dominate one's enemies. What great reverence for his enemies a noble human being has. And such reverence is already a bridge to love, he says. On the other hand, to imagine the enemy as a human being of resentment conceives of him, and precisely here is his deed, his creation, he is conceived of the evil enemy, the evil one, the moral. And indeed, as the basic concept, starting from which he now thinks of as reaction and counterpart, a good one namely himself. Okay, so this is what I was saying before, that both start with the powerful, identified either as good by the noble system, or evil by the moral system. 